You've seen my bridge to nowhere. Now watch me build the highway that gets you there on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. In some recent videos, you watched me build, paint, and weather the highway overpass for Interstate Loop 820 as it runs through Saginaw, Texas, just north of Fort Worth. Well, today we're going to build the approach ramp and the highways on that approach ramp that lead to that highway overpass. We're going to build up the terrain and we're going to model the highway lanes and paint and weather them. Have you built highways on your model railroad layout? Tell me about the techniques that you used in the comment section down below. Now let's go over to this scene on my layout and I'll show you exactly how I prepared and built these highways so that this will no longer be the bridge to nowhere. This area on my layout where the overpass sits had about three different levels of elevation with about a half an inch total between the height of the highest and the lowest. I started by leveling off the foam portion, which was the highest part, using a Sureform tool. I had two pieces of foam cut to size. One was two inch thick and the other one half inch thick extruded foam. Having marked where they were to sit on the layout, I used Great Stuff Spray Foam to mount the foam to the layout and to laminate the two pieces together. I then used two 10 pound dumbbells to weigh the foam down as the great stuff sets because it will expand as it cures. I let this sit for several hours. After the great stuff had cured, I removed the weights and marked the locations of the overpass on the top of the foam to guide me as I shaped it. This foam was too thick, so some of the foam needed to be carved away over the entire length of the ramp. I started carving the general shape with a linoleum knife. I began by working on the sloped sides and the abutment end of the ramp. I then used a hacksaw blade to begin working down the roadway slope. I took my time and cut away the excess a little piece at a time. With the rough shape beginning to form, I used the Sureform tool to carve and smooth the ramp. Periodically, I vacuumed up the trash to help me to be able to see my work. Using the overpass as a guide, I marked the position of the abutments and carved a notch in the foam for the location, allowing enough clearance for the thickness of the abutments themselves. The foam was still too thick, so I marked the level to which I needed to carve the foam using the overpass as a guide. 
I then carved the foam down more to match this mark. This led to further carving down the entire length of the ramp. I smoothed the ramp with the Sureform tool, forming the curves and the slopes to my liking. When I was happy with the shape, I vacuumed up the trash. I then marked the location of the roadways on the ramp. I used Sculptamold mixed with a little bit of tan paint to fill any gaps and to make the final shape of the slope and to blend it with the surrounding scenery base. When the sculptor mold had dried, I sanded it smooth and then vacuumed up the dust. With the base coming along, I next cut the highways from 40 thousandths thick styrene. To match the overpass, I cut each highway section 32 scale feet wide. This allows for two 11 foot lanes and a shoulder on each side. I cut them a little long so that I could later mark and cut the ends to match the fascia. I used a straight edge to mark, score, and snap the highways. I test fit the highways on the ramp base. Then I marked and cut the curved ends of the fascia. I also marked out the median between the lanes on the foam base, and I used a curved rasp to carve a slight depression in the median. Back at the workbench, I sanded the edges of the highway, and then I used a piece of 220 grit sandpaper in a circular motion to add a little bit of texture to the highway and remove the shiny surface of the styrene. After I had gone over the full length with the 220 grit sandpaper, I went over it again with 400 grit sandpaper just to even out the texture. I marked the borders of the lanes and scored them with a dental pick in order to be able to show the joints where the asphalt was laid between the lanes. I mixed up a dark gray paint using flat white and flat black Model Masters paint in order to get the, exactly the shade that I wanted for these faded asphalt roads. I then airbrushed the highways using a couple of coats in order to get a good coverage without the possibility of runs and drips. I used panel liner to highlight the joints where I scored between the highways, and I weathered the highways exactly as I did the overpasses in the previous video. If you haven't seen that video, you'll find a link to it in the card in the corner of your screen right now. You can see exactly how I weathered and lined these lanes in that video. And this is where we are now. In the final installment in this series, I will build the abutments and the retaining walls, as well as scenic the entire scene. Well, this scene is certainly coming along, and I'm really pleased with how these highways look as they lead up to the overpass. In the last video in this series, I'll show you how I scenic the approach ramp to this overpass and build both the abutments and the retaining walls underneath the bridge itself. So watch for that video coming very soon. Well, if you enjoyed this video, here's a link to some more scenery building videos I know you'll enjoy as well. Check out the description down below for my Amazon page, my Amazon pick of the week, my Patreon page, and links to connect with me on social media. 
And be sure and join me each Tuesday as I'll be bringing you more great model railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you then. Tin Lizzie?